from Miami is Detective John Beza. He's a former New York City homicide detective. Uh, you know, Detective, let me first, uh, let's go for first of these pictures again, because I mean, when we saw them, uh, it is really stunning, especially these shots. Uh, this is the Halloween party here uh, where he's dressing up, but some of these other ones, he's in school wearing dark clothes. Um, what is this saying about this individual? Well, wh while it may um, describe a, a disillusioned youth, a young adult, um, somebody that may be a bit disturbed. Um, I believe that we have, there are thousands of, of young adults who behave in a similar manner and dress in a similar manner, um, but they don't go out and kill people on a daily basis. And um, I think while we can focus on this and it makes interesting fodder, I don't think that we, th this is the w this is what we have to focus on. I it think could just be a wacky, disturbing. just a wacky teenager, and, and again, like you said, yeah. could just be someone who's, who's playing around. What about the issue with the dog? Um, would someone kill over a dog? Somebody certainly could kill over over a dog, and probably has killed over a dog. In this case, though, I I think that that theory kind of borders on the ridiculous, and the reason I say that is because. If somebody killed the dog, uh, typically you're not going to wait two weeks and show this type of anger. Uh, this is an anger retaliatory type crime that we see here, where there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of damage to the victim. And uh, I don't think that that's held in, you know, uh, somebody's going to hold that in for two weeks and uh, then just suddenly go ahead and, and do this. I think there's something deeper here that we may not be seeing that's not on the surface. Is separate than the credit cards, separate than the marijuana pot stuff, separate than the dog, the you think? Yes, Rita. I think that there is a possibility as well that uh, he may have uh, seen this woman from afar, observed her, viewed her. Um, he may have known that the, her husband wasn't going to be home. He may have attempted to make contact with her. She may have uh, obviously sh uh, did not want that contact. And there, uh, thereby the anger comes. And I think that that's maybe what we're seeing here. It's a possibility. But uh, there's a lot of focus just on... Um, uh, alone, the marijuana thing, and that that could be true, but I think we there's something else beyond uh, beneath the surface here. Yeah, I agree with you. There seems like there's something, especially to go to the end of almost you know hitting her 40 times, which is what he's accused of. Also, the stabbing, like as you pointed, that's very very violent. Um, separate than this, the mother, uh, big development. The mother now saying she's going to testify against her son. How key is she? Well, she's she's pretty key here. I think that. The, depending on what the evidence, the physical evidence they have, because we don't know exactly what they have right now. But her, she's pretty key. Um, I think it's going to depend on whether the jury is going to believe her and believe what she has to say, because she is getting a deal. But remember, every day the government makes deals with people, and prosecutors make deals with people to, to testify and tell the truth. It's up to the jury to determine whether she's telling the truth. So I think she is pretty key. Yeah, how do you handle the interrogation of someone like that? Well, I think what you need to do is you need to get specifics from her. You, it, it can't be in generalities. It has to be something that uh, only uh, her son would know or that she could learn from her son about this crime. Uh, something very specific that people could know, yes, in fact, she did hear this or she did uh, talk to her son about this. To determine the credibility. Detective, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Still ahead, thank everybody, you. on live and direct. Do you know who...